Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. For this video, I'm going to discuss how can we actually design an optimum distributed high pass filter on microstrip line. This will be the part 20 series discussion on filter design. If you're keen to know more about filter design, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Okay, under the description, this playlist will give you a full comprehensive discussion on filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Firstly, let's understand what is optimum distributed high pass filter. Okay, so this optimum distributed high pass filter, mainly they consist of two parts. One will be the cascade of shun short circuit stub. Okay, so this is actually what we call the shun short circuit stub. Okay, you can see over here on the other side here, basically will be short circuit. So therefore, they are called short circuit stub because this side, they actually all shorted to the ground. They have an electrical length, okay, which is denote over here at some specific frequency, FC. Okay, usually the cutoff frequency will be the cutoff frequency of high pass filter. So on the next few slides, I'm going to discuss what is actually the cutoff frequency of a high pass filter. At this moment, I think we are good to go to continue. Okay, as I told you earlier on, there are actually two main elements. So this is the shunt short circuit stop. Another thing to take note will be this. This is what we call the connecting line. The connecting line actually connected the shunt short circuit. Can you see here? This is one short circuit stop. This is another one short circuit stop. They are actually connected by this connecting line. Okay, this connecting line have double the electrical length as compared to the short circuit stop. Okay, so this is a very simple description on optimum distributed high pass filter and actually how this is actually how they look like in a schematic way. Okay, so later on, I'm going to show you step by step how can we actually calculate the impedance value so that we are able to achieve this optimum distributed high pass filter. Okay, so this diagram here typically show two high pass filter. Okay, earlier on, I have discussed what is actually a high pass filter. This is what we call the cut off frequency of a high pass filter. So in short, anything after this point, everything will be able to pass. So basically, this is what you mean by cutoff frequency. Anything that is below this cutoff frequency, the so-called signal under this frequency category will be banned to pass. They will not be able to pass. In short, anything after this high pass filter or cutoff frequency of the high pass filter, they will be able to pass. So in a reality world, okay, let's move this into the reality world. Okay, so this point here, as I have described, this is what we call the cutoff frequency. Any point after this cutoff frequency, everything will be able to pass. But in the practical world, okay, you know that this thing cannot go on and on. They come to a point that they will actually decay. So this is what we call a higher cutoff frequency, maybe for a high pass filter, which means that after this point, the effect of pass band is not that ideal anymore. So we want to design this in order to avoid this kind of situation. This is what I mentioned earlier on. In a practical world, there is nothing that will go on and on and on until infinite. In the reality world or in the practical world, they somehow will decay. And we need to consider this decay factor also. Okay, so later on, I will show it to you how can we actually consider this so-called high-pass filter, the upper cutoff frequency of a high-pass filter, which I will illustrate later on. Okay, so this table here basically show the element values of optimum distributed high pass filter with a 0 0.1 dB ripple. So in short, later on, I'm going to show it to you step by step. How can we actually make use of this table to calculate the impedance of all the elements that I've shown you over here? Okay, how can we actually use the table to calculate, for example, what is my Y0 or Y1 over here? And then this is my Y12. Okay, how can I actually use the table to calculate all these values here? So this will be the table. I will show it to you step by step. How can we actually make use of this table to calculate all the impedance value of this optimum distributed high-pass filter? Okay, I think it's always good to start with an example. 
Okay, so that everything will be more clear if we have an example to illustrate. Okay, so the example actually tasks us to design this optimum distributed high pass filter. They have the cutoff frequency. Okay, so this is the cutoff frequency of a high pass filter, which is 1.5 gigahertz and a 0 0.1 dB ripple pass band, okay, up to 6.5 gigahertz. Okay, so this is what I have mentioned earlier on. You can consider this as a higher cutoff frequency for a high pass filter, okay, which means that, as I told you earlier on, high pass filter won't be able to go on and on and on. End of the day, there will be some decay. So for this case here, the decay will be at around 6.5 gigahertz. Okay, so this is basically the example. How can we actually start by doing this example? Okay, so how can we calculate the electrical length? Okay, so this is a formula. Okay, don't do well so much on the equation. This is actually the formula. The key thing is how to know this value, the electrical length over here. Since I know my cutoff frequency as I'm given in the question, which is 1.5 gigahertz. So I actually sub this 1.5 gigahertz into the cutoff frequency, which is shown over here. So next, I just need to know what is my electrical length. If I rearrange the formula, okay, I actually can calculate that my electrical length, which is 0 0.589 radian. And you can convert this radian to degree by using the calculator. You can actually calculate that it is actually 33.75 degree. So once I have this, I'm ready to use the table to calculate the impedance. Now I know my electrical length, which is 33.75, okay, which is shown over here. But if you look at the electrical length here, okay, under this table, there's nothing called 33. Okay, if you still remember, I have calculated the electrical length as 33.75. But if you refer to the table, let's say I intend to use n equals to 6, okay, which is n equals to 6, you can see that there is no 33.75. And if you decided to use this 30, okay, for example, for this case here, I decided to use all this 30 value. Okay, so under this 30 degree value, this will actually give us a wider pass band. Okay, the question tells us to do 6.5. You can imagine that probably this will be 6.5, sorry, 7.5. For example, now, if I use this 35, okay, so the question tells us to do 6.5, which is in between here, Typically for 35 degree, you can imagine, let's say okay, they can have a wider pass band, maybe up to 6 gigahertz. You can imagine this. So over here in short, okay, the, the bigger this number, okay, the shorter the pass band and the smaller the electrical length, which give us a wider pass band, which is illustrated here. Okay, because the smaller the electrical length at the cutoff, the wider the pass band we are going to have. So in short, okay, the smaller it is, I, I'm going to have a wider pass band. Okay, whether is it desired or not desired, it really depends on your outcome. Okay, so next. In order to fulfill clearly this 33.75, I actually can do this interpolation. Okay, so what is this interpolation? Which is to obtain, because 33.75 is actually in between 30 and 35. So I can actually do an interpolation Okay, to get a more accurate result. Okay, for example, let's do this Y1. Okay, Y1 is actually over here. So the result should be in between this 0 0.35346 and 0 0.48096. Okay, 33.75 is in between here. So therefore, okay, in order to calculate what will be the so-called emittance of my first uh, sun, sun short circuit stuff, Okay, I actually supposed to do this. Okay, so this is 0 0.35, which is obtained from this value here. Okay, after that, I use this 0 0.48096, which is from here because the number 33.75 is in between these two numbers. So this will be 0 0.48096 minus this original number. This 5 is because the difference between these two is 5 degree. And this 3.75 is because uh, if I use this 33.75 minus away 30, I actually got this 3.75. And if I calculate, okay, so the emittance of my first short circuit start will be 0 0.44909. Okay, so this is how we can actually do the interpolation. Let me give you an example. Okay, so basically what you need to do is, okay, so the number one you substitute into here. 
the number two value you substitute into here and this will be the number one value. The difference is always five, so it will be always five. And the separation actually depend on the, the separation that you actually calculate on. So with this, you can actually calculate all the values of Y1, Y12, Y2, Y23, Y3, and also Y34. So if it's not clear, okay, let me give you an example. So this one, you can substitute the position at one. Okay, so this two, you can substitute the position at two. This one, you can again substitute at this position, and this will be still five. This will be 3.75. You can actually calculate your Y12, which is the connecting line, okay, the admittance. So over here, you can do it on your own, I believe. You can calculate all the value, and if you did not make any mistake, okay, I think typically you will be able to derive this answer as shown over here. So this is the early on what I calculate, okay, the emittance of the first short circuit stop, okay, which is 0 0.44909. Okay, how can I actually obtain the impedance? Okay, I need to do one divided by this number. One divided by this number, I need to multiply by 50. I need to do denormalize. So I need to do one divided by this guy and multiply by 50. I suppose to get this 111.3 one, one, one ohm. So this is my impedance that I obtained on the short circuit start over here. Okay, so I can also do the number two. Okay, again, on this will be on Y2. One divided by 0 0.63221. And after that, I multiply by 50. I suppose to get this 79.1, okay, which is illustrated from here. Same for Z3. Okay, Z3, I need to obtain this number. 1 divided by this number, multiplied by 50. Okay, I suppose to get 70.1 ohm. Same for the connecting line. So after you have calculated all the impedance, okay, you can actually design the microstrip line as shown over here. Okay, the connecting line, okay, it seems to be quite close to 50 ohm. As you can see from here, they are actually quite close to 50 ohm. So you will not be able to see Okay, by eyes, okay, the so-called the difference on the width of the microstrip line. But in short, okay, this is typically almost close to 50 ohm. Even the feeding line of 50 ohm, they look quite quite similar in terms of the width. Okay, but uh, there will be some slight adjustment okay, that you need to do on the width on the connecting line. Okay, so basically this is how we can actually calculate this optimum distributed high pass filter. Guys, please help me out. If you find this video to be helpful, please consider to like it and also consider to subscribe to this channel and also turn on your notification bell so that later on you will be able to receive more information on this channel. Guys, thank you so much for your strong support. So in short, once I have done all the design on the microstrip line, okay, so these are all the short circuit stuff. Okay, so in short, this will be all VR. Okay, they will be drilled through to the another side of the microstrip. Okay, remember this is a microstrip line. So what I need to do is I drill through underneath this so-called this this uh this spot here will be all the grounding. So what I need to do is basically I just throw the so-called the flux through it, and this will be all short circuit. Okay, so after I have run this, you can also do a very quick simulation. This will be the outcome of the simulation. Okay, you can see from here, I actually have a cutoff frequency of about 1.5 gigahertz. Okay, the cutoff frequency is slightly less than seven, which is about six point, let's say six point nine gigahertz, which is considered quite good. We actually designed this at six point five gigahertz. Okay, because of some deviation of different okay, so therefore the cutoff frequency, which is around six point nine gigahertz, which I feel that it will be still acceptable under this consideration of high pass filter. So in short, today I show you a so-called a step-by-step -step how can we actually design this optimum distributed high pass filter. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much.